All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Let's get started here right on time. Want to be uh, uh, value your time here. So, um, as you may have seen, the topic for today, I have a couple of things I want to go over. It's regarding new feature, uh, new features that we've built. So, just want to make sure everyone is aware of those. Uh, recap those, and again, feel free to ask questions in the Q and A. Uh, as well as at the end, I am going to open it up if we want to have a deeper discussion too. So um, feel free to put the Q and A's during the the session, and if you'd like, at the end we'll um, we'll maybe do the raising hand and unmute and go from there. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, today's discussion is going to be around the occupancy map and a couple of changes that we've made make sure everyone is aware of those changes and how to use them um, and just get some general feedback if, if need be. So uh, for those of you that have been using it for a while, um, the occupancy map used to have a couple of buttons that are no longer there. Uh, they displayed like one person versus multiple people and it was called single selection and group selection. So single selection was if you wanted to make a reservation for one room or unit. Uh, group was if you wanted to make more than one. So those buttons vanished. So they're gone. So what that means is now uh, when we make reservations, it's sort of uh, either or. So it just depends upon if you want to select more than one unit or not. So let's go through the process of, of making a reservation. We'll first go through just at, just the one unit. So. Obviously, if I'm on here, I can just click and drag. Uh, so I click and drag and I release and it kind of gives me this all, all what's always been used as the single selection mode. So it will pop up with this unit and the default rate for that particular unit. Now what's changed is without having to do any group selection mode, now I can continue and add another unit and you'll see it. Uh, kind of collapse here and again I can add as many as I want. So now in my example here I've got four units selected. Uh, what's different again even in the group selection mode is we now allow you to actually change the rate for any particular for unit. So if I want to change the rate for this uh, two queen unit I can actually just hit the little pencil button and I could change uh, the rate right here uh, and on the fly. So I could kind of modify that. Uh, if they decide they don't want all of these units, you can remove them a couple of different ways. You can just hit the little trash can button in the center here that kind of uh, removes it from the selection. Or you can use this little X button uh, on the calendar option that removes them. So again, you can kind of just add them, remove them. The other cool feature here is maybe you want to use this for kind of a quoting tool. So I've selected three. They're only going to choose one. They, um, well, it doesn't make sense. I'll choose this one here. So maybe this one is the lowest price and they decide to move forward with this one. I can just hit this little green uh, arrow button here. Um, and then just book that one unit out of these four. So uh, hope that makes sense. Uh, again, editing the rate for, for any particular unit in a group reservation is new. Uh, the ability to remove add um, without having to select group mode or single mode. Um, so hope all that makes sense. And again, you would just continue making this reservation. So uh, if there is, deeper discussion needed about process of making reservation, we can do that uh, towards the end here. So, uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, actually, I'm going to put a poll up on the screen here. And I just kind of want to get a gauge of, of how many, who's attending here, and how many uh, units you guys have. So if you could just take a little bit of time out and answer uh, these particular questions. I want to gauge uh, where we're at here. So, 
All right, we got a little bit more than half of people voted so far. Let's give it another uh, 10 seconds or so and see if we can't capture. Any more? All right, five more seconds to vote if you haven't already. All right. Um, the other question I am going to ask here before we get started. So if you could please vote on this, I'd like to just gauge again who is in here um, for this session and hopefully we can take advantage of it. So All right, let's give it another 10 seconds or so if you guys could share. Five more seconds. All right. Um, so just to give you an idea, um, the second question, sorry, I didn't share the the uh, first question. Second question, just to give you an idea of other people that are on here. Looks like we've got a 67%, 33% split between people that book by actual individual unit versus uh, the type of unit. So um, appreciate that, that'll help me. So I know the people that book by unit type, this will be kind of, um, could potentially be big for you if you haven't already seen it. But I know we announced it and I just wanna make sure that people are aware of it. So you'll notice on my screen here, I have all my individual units listed, um, but I have it set up where if I'm a larger property here, so I've got quite a few units in my example here, um, but I book by unit type, we now have in the settings button here, if I go to settings and go to display settings, we now have a feature called book by type. So I'm gonna select that. So I'll go select that and hit save settings. So now what's gonna happen here is you're gonna notice my screen change. So now instead of listing each particular unit, I've actually just got the unit types listed. Uh, if for some reason I did wanna see each unit, I, couldn't, I can kinda uh, use this collapse button expand and contract button here. But in general, now I've got the unit type listed here. And then the number on the screen now is the number of those units available for any given time period. And then this bar um, progresses as more and more are booked. So you'll see on this one, um, six, six are left. Um, so the status is this keeps climbing until it's 100% booked. And then when it is booked, you'll see uh, a none available sign. So now what happens is now I no longer book each particular unit, but I book by unit type. So if they want a double queen, I am going to just click and drag on this double queen. Uh, this little one symbol appears because I've got one double queen selected. So if this goes back into what we covered earlier into a group reservation and they want another double queen, I can simply click and drag again on those uh, and keep adding those or obviously a different unit type. I can click on that and then I'll have the same features available to me as I showed you earlier. So I can click and edit the quote or I can book just this unit. I can remove one of these uh, double queens from the from the list, etc. So um, hopefully people will take advantage of that. I know we have heard that a bunch of different times that uh, people don't necessarily want to put them in a specific unit. They wanna put them in a unit type. Um, so let's actually, let's continue making this reservation. I just kinda wanted to, to show you how it actually is gonna assign the units. So now let's go through the process of, of entering this reservation. So let's, Julia Roberts is always a good guest of mine. So let's make a reservation. Uh, I'm just gonna hit book without confirmation. So I've got this reservation in place. I'm gonna close this out and now um, kind of go back to this screen. Uh, if I 
expand that um, and contract, so you'll you'll now see. I, I forgot what other unit um, I've got her in. So um, I've got her in uh, these specific units now. So you'll notice that that uh, she's assigned those specific units. So if you do want to see uh, those that are available, you can expand and contract those. Um, so I believe that's kind of all I wanted to recap. Those are kind of the new features that we've put in place and hopefully people found value in that. Uh, I do want to now switch over to some Q&A. Again, feel free to use the Q&A and, and I don't know if anybody has joined in these before, but something that I am going to do this year is uh, we're going to open these things up to really not only talk about what we've discussed here today, um, but just any other questions, feedback that we get. And I'm not gonna sit here for an hour and, and field every call. So we might take some offline, but I kind of want it to be more interactive here um, and share those things. So I want to uh, answer some questions here. Uh, the first one came in. Uh, when sending an invoice to a guest, is there a way to keep the invoice up to make a copy? Now, if it closes, I have to reopen. Um, Judy, if you don't mind, I may unmute you here to get a little bit uh, better explanation so that I'm aware of your question. Judy, I think you should be able to talk. Can you hear me? I think you're muted. All right. Judy, if you want to unmute, if you want to talk about it, uh, I'm not quite sure what that question means. So let's just take that offline. Um, can you change the rate by a percentage? So I'm guessing what uh, the question is, if I, if I click on this and um, want, well, maybe it's if I click on this and want to change the rate by a percentage, is that kind of the, uh, the question? So you can absolutely reduce, I suppose you can um, offer a, a negative discount, but this discounts button here is where if you want to give them a 5% discount, you can type in five and hit percent here. So discounts 5% and it would reduce it by 5% on a single unit mode. So if I click and drag for a single unit, that discounts button is right here. So I click on that, I can type in a number and this is where I could give a percentage discount. Uh, this is where I could apply a dollar amount discount. So whatever I type in here is the number, whether it's a percentage or a dollar amount. Uh, and then finally, the last way, as long as we're on discounts here, the last couple of ways you can change the rates, uh, maybe if you don't want to pick an existing rate, is simply click in any one of these nights. If you just want to give them that last night for 100 bucks, you could just type in 100, save that. Or if you'd like to just change the rates for every night and you want them to just be 75 bucks, you can just hit the word rate and type in 75 and it'll change them. So those are the, the questions there. Um, got a good comment here, uses both specific rooms and room types. So in that scenario, if you do some unit types and some units, what this really is drawing from is your rate plans. So these are really my rate plans. So if you have specific units that you book, they would have their own rate plan uh, and then they would be listed as an actual unit right there. Uh, and if they have uh, the rate plan is assigned to multiple units and it'd be collapsible here. So just to give you an idea there. Uh, Heather, you asked, is there a way to increase all rates without going through and increasing one by one? I think maybe you raised your hand too, so I might um, unmute you here, Heather. Can you can hear me? Uh, yeah, I can, I can hear. hear him. Okay, 
So I was the one who asked the first question about raising everything by a percentage. I wasn't in, um, talking about when you're making a reservation, but in your configuration settings, like we raise our rates every year and it varies and sometimes it'll vary per um, type of unit. But um, for the most part, because we have all very different units, we uh, increased the rates. For example, this year we just uh, decided to do it 2% um, with the environment that we're in and whatnot. Um, and so instead of having to go in and tediously increase each unit, each um, season, et cetera, in the wizard, um, is there a way to just, okay, input, we want to increase all the rates across the board daily, weekly, et cetera, by 3% to 2%, whatever, without having to spend hours. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good question. Uh, it is, uh, as you can imagine, it is something that you're not the only one that's asked us. So uh, I am imagining you're not talking about this quick rate editor, right? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. Okay. We've, yeah. but, um, so it's when you're building your rates for like next year. Yes, exactly. Right? Yep. Yep. So have you have you seen the discounts uh, option now? In when you're making a reservation, yes. But okay. Not in, not in the configuration. So we may I, I may want to take this offline with you specifically because I don't know your exact like how you do your rates. So this may or may not it benefit you. We've heard a lot of people that it did benefit them greatly. Um, okay. First off, let me back up and say that they, the development team, when I say they, um, we understand this is a priority and it, it is actually being actively worked on. Awesome. So hopefully this is the last year you'd have to deal with that. I never like to give dates and I probably shouldn't have even said this year, but I have a good indication so <laughs> um, but let's talk about this rate plan so or rate discounts I'm sorry so what this does is you could really have just one particular rate set up now so whereas do you have multiple rates within a rate plan uh if you, yes, I mean, we kind of have tiered structure as far as in the winter, it's the cheapest and in high time summer is the most expensive. Sure, but it's kind of like, like my one nightly rate is this, it fluctuates for the time of the year, right? Correct. But, but I have one rate. So this one might might help you and um, I wasn't prepared. So forgive me if I fumbled just a little bit, but um, this, discount allows, this discount allows you to just kind of um, put in a, a name of a discount. And yeah, I have used it for like okay. military discount, um, like special season discounts, et cetera. Um, but I have not thought of or wrapped my head around doing it. Anymore. Yeah, so, so you can basically put in like, okay, I want this quote unquote discount to be a certain percent, um, like a net, you know, if you want to raise it, you go like negative 5% to a certain unit or a unit type. And then you can do applicable nights and come in here and select that. Again, it, I'm not trying to say this is your solution, um, but we have had a few people use this successfully to where now next year they can kind of just select uh, that as their discount. But what we're planning on is to kind of create one and then instead of having to do uh, type in dollar amounts all the time is to just say here's a new season I want it to be five percent higher or you know 2022 I just want it to be five percent higher so that's that would be the that's the ideal solution yeah uh, so awesome. that yeah and so that's coming down the pipeline so um, hopefully that I know that doesn't like and well, it kind of answers your question, but it doesn't help you today. So, no. um, but yeah, so just, I mean, you could, you could toy around with that, but I'm imagining yeah, yeah. you probably already have your rates set up for this year. So, um, yeah, no, it was really, we're starting to do next year's because people are rebooking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So hopefully okay. we'll have that. Um, I'll be doing another one of these sessions regarding, uh, the rate, new rate setup soon. So, okay. And then just a quick question, completely, that's my second other question, is uh, how close in the pipeline are you to having a payments by, you know, reservation only payments report? Reservations only payments report. So, so just. Um, so not, not any of the POS stuff or anything, right. but just be able to isolate the payments that were made to anything related to a reservation as opposed to anything related okay. to. That, so 
I am going to write that one down because I have never heard of that request before. I'm sure you've probably given it to the support team. So yeah, um, I don't payments reservation so basically like show me my payments but only ones that were applied to reservation not my like pos only right so you're saying like people that purchase something and they're not staying with you you want to right. exclude those okay right because in the you know interface between the the pos system actually I mean the reservation um pms system sorry um and our quickbooks you know to be able to balance your books you really need to know accurately what are um not just all your payments but what are the payments for a reservation because in in our industry taking deposits that you know that's unrealized income technically yep. it's a liability um you need to know what um to be able to isolate isolate easier without a ton of math or a ton of you know exporting into excel and monkeying with a bunch of stuff what right. was just paid to um those deposits and to the revenue that was just generated from cabin so that you know anything that is to the uh, pos stuff is isolated out um yeah anyway um, okay yeah no i appreciate that uh the great thing here is i'm recording these things too so um i will get the development team i know that their initiative is to talk to more people too to truly get an understanding so we we may be reaching out to you uh on the side. And I know, I know William knows about this very well because we've talked okay. about it and, he, and he's been into our QuickBooks and seen how the, seen the necessity. So he could probably explain okay, it. Better than, but yeah. Wanted to make sure that that is out there. Okay, great. Yeah, definitely. I will follow up with that and I'll just kind of relay whatever I hear from, uh, from them directly to you. So. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Uh, all right, let me type, make sure I have anybody that's answered or typed in Q and A's first here. So Vicki, on, on reservation, the invoice has a column for retail that does not appear on the email invoice. So my guess is Uh, my guess is that you're saying we have a, a reservation here and you look at the invoice. Well, you know what, Vicki, I may just unmute you just to make sure. All right, Vicki, I've allowed you to unmute yourself. You there? Hello, I can see you unmuted, but I can't hear anything. All right, well, maybe this, uh, sorry for technical difficulties here, Vicki, I can't, I can't hear you. Um, I'm gonna put you back on mute here. So uh, I do know if, if maybe what you're talking about here is uh, the, the printable, the printable version of versus the email version. That stuff is customizable in the configuration section. So I go to the configuration section under letters and I go to the invoice area. Um, if you are using kind of a, the standard invoice that was set up, um, it's probably like this, but just to give you uh, an idea, let me, I'm gonna just go in here and use i'm going to type in letter code and use invoice because i know we have a table that has pretty much everything in there so it's invoice i believe it's this invoice line items with details yes so um that gives you a ton of different columns, which you can remove the ones that you don't want. Um, so you can come in here and modify that invoice that you email out to include, you mentioned the retail, it didn't include the retail. So you could include this uh, table in your 
your letter set up that you email out. If you need help with that, just give give the support team a call. So, uh, all right, hopefully that answered your question. Sorry, we couldn't talk to you there. So uh, next question. So arrived late on the screen with the wedding group booking on the map. Could you go over how to notate that? Yeah, perfectly. And I'm glad somebody noticed that. I did that on purpose. <laughs> uh, first thing I'm going to do is go back to get rid of the book by unit type so it displays better here. This is one of those features that um, I don't think a lot of people use that might come in handy sometimes. So really, uh, with ResStream, when you make a new reservation, by default, uh, the reservation name is their last comma first. So you'll see, you know, last comma first, last comma first, last comma first. On this one, um, what I did here, and I can do that to any reservation. So let me do one that's not. So I can click on a reservation. This suitcase button on the very top, this is actually the reservation name. So again, by default, it has her name in here, but I can modify this. And just so you guys know, this is not actually changing their name. So you're not doing any harm to that person's name or contact name. So what I did is I just put in a couple asterisks and put in wedding. Um, if I could type, I could spell it. So I put in, you know, wedding Roberts uh, and then check mark. So now what that does is the reservation name is wedding or whatever you want to call it. And now what it does is it drops her down kind of that second line as the guest in these particular units. So um, yeah, glad you picked up on that. That's a cool little feature. Um, hope it helps. And you can follow up with me later if that didn't answer your question. So uh, somebody's been adding themselves as a CC to every letter I send. This way, communications in Outlook. Marianne, yep. Oh, um, I definitely saw that come in. So that, I actually have that written down. I actually had it written down yesterday. I noticed that post. Um, so what the question is, is when we go to email a letter, she kind of wants it also to just automatically be sent to her inbox. So like basically like CCing uh, herself or better yet, she suggested that we BCC automatically herself. So um, Marianne, I, I've got that suggestion down. I've actually got it on my list to uh, follow up. I, th I, know, I know that there's a ticket out there already, but I'll just kind of check the status on that one. So great suggestion. Uh, I think it's valuable. Um, it's just a matter of uh, on the back end, um, how they make that change. So, all right, uh, just a couple of more here. So um, use the discount rate to create a promotion. For example, guests can type in a code winter 10 for a 10% discount. Perfect, well, let's cover that. So um, I'm guessing it refers to going back into the configuration here. So I can come in and create a discount and I'll use your example exactly. So um, I'm going to add a new discount and I'm gonna call it winter getaway. And again, you can select if this is a weekday only version or you know just does not include Friday, Saturday or whatever it is here that you want. Uh, you can say this is only good. Well, hopefully, I don't know where you guys live. I'm actually, if you don't know much about me, I'm actually in Minnesota. So I'm a remote person for ResStream. So if I'm talking winter, I'm hoping that it ends here by end of April, but um, I'll just say March 15th. Hopefully that's a good winter end date. Uh, and then you can decide whether you want it to be um, allowing it to book on the booking engine and you'll notice here, before I click that, um, when I click it, and now it asks me, do I want to make this available only if they put in a promo code? So for your example, um, I could type in, it's just always better to use all caps for a promo. So I could type in winter 10 
So in my email campaigns or, or maybe my website, I can promote a winter getaway special that they need to type in a specific uh, promo code. Um, so again here, so you can then decide whether this is just for, for any time period, any reservation, that would be a no trigger. Um, or if this is a, in, in your scenario, that's what it would be. It would be a no trigger. So you just, when they type in, they get 10% off. Um, and then you can type in restricted to certain unit types or certain units. So if, if you want to um, only allow it to, for certain rooms, you can just select those. Uh, or you can say it's only valid on my uh, King Suites because those are the highest price and, and I, I just want it to be available on there. But you can kind of play around with that. So in addition to just um, a certain percentage, we can also do uh, a stay based. So this is an example of stay this many nights, um, get the night at, uh, you know, stay three nights, get the fourth night at, you know, maybe 100% off or fourth night free. Uh, or I can just say stay one night, you're going to get 10% off. Stay two nights, get 15% off. You get the idea. I don't need to keep going. <laughs> um, so you can just kind of add a graduated discount here. So again, um, hopefully that helps and explains, Dan. But if you need to uh, follow up later, just, just catch me offline there. So um, all right, that's that question. A couple more here. Online availability, can we add text to the page right above the calendar, explain how the views work? Yes. So um, whoever asked that question, yes, you can. Uh, reach out to me uh, afterwards and we can talk about adding some text to your booking engine. Uh, will there ever be a way to add photos to a bad guests like damage? Uh, thanks for the question. I don't know if we will ever, um, I shouldn't, I, I'm going to say I don't know. So we've heard this just, just a couple of times over the years where people want to attach a, a photo. Um, a good, I do have a workaround for it. Some people really liked it. Um, a couple of people said it wouldn't work. So, um, the question is, can we go in here and under people and, um, you know, Starbuck trash the room and we took a photo and we want to kind of put that somewhere on here. So that's kind of the overall question and the uh, feedback and the wish list. So the answer is, I'm not sure we'll, we'll do that. Um, a workaround is, um, I'm going to just, I'll put it in this private new oh hey here's an example he did trash the room <laughs> so what people have done is they will take the picture with their phone um, most people uh, at least a lot of people have like a google photos account or an icloud account you can actually for any photo you can actually get a link directly to that photo um, and then what you do is you go to that photo, you get the link for that, and then you just paste that link in this notes and save it. Um, so again, the picture is not going to just appear here, but you can click on that link, copy it and put it into the, the uh, URL up here, and you'll go directly to that photo. So it, it's not like a uh, 100% the solution you're asking for, but it has worked in uh, a few people that I've talked about it. So just an idea on that. So good, good feedback and question though. So uh, question, is there a way to set up email groups? Um, I'm assuming you mean, well, you know what, Heather, I'm gonna unmute you again. Okay. Uh, All right. Yep, I'm here. All right. Um, the um, and my office manager, who's on a different device, is the one who threw that question out. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, basically, to be able to 
instead of obviously when you're in a reservation and there's multiple members of that reservation, you can send a, a email to all those people. But what if I, you know, I have a um, a bunch of my people are seasonal campers and I want to send out an email just to them. Um, it doesn't make sense to, you know, set up a whole MailChimp account or something like that for just like 15 people. Um, but, you know, to be able to send out or to send out a whole um, email to all of our guests that have stayed within this time. And I know that there's, it, it was kind of hard to find and hard to maneuver to be able to, uh, um, I noticed that there was a, when you can set up with the parameters, whether it's people or reservations, a group of people and then export it to a CSV file. Right. Um, but it was a little tricky for me. And, and, and is that really the only way we can set up email groups or is there anything else that I'm missing? So, yeah, so right at this point, we do not do like mass emails from, I know you're talking to me if you have 15, that's not necessarily mass email, but. But also eventually, you know, if I wanted to do an email, you know, to everybody, like say the COVID updates or whatever. Yep. You know. yep. So, um, so the, the idea here that you would like is to create a list, like I'm, like for example, if you had a tag as a seasonal, I'm using club member, find everybody that matches that. I've got these people to hit an email button and it emails these four people. Um, that is something that is uh, being discussed um, and talked about and, and most likely will get in there. I don't know, a I don't even know a timeline on that. The reason that we don't now is, you know, we our program isn't an email program. So we're having to work with a company that kind of sends emails on your behalf. So huh. there are some certain restrictions that that are just inherent in that. Okay. Um, the other reason we ha haven't is because we're, we believe at ResStream that and again, your your one example isn't necessarily doesn't pertain to this, but blindly sending out emails without actually knowing kind of what happens. So, for example, like I want to email everybody that came two years ago, but not last year um, to try to get them to come again or to get them aware. Um, we feel like by just sending that you really don't you're hoping it gets to people, it gets delivered, you're hoping people see that. Um, by using programs like MailChimp, Constant Contact, you actually get to follow up on that campaign and see, okay, um, 10 of those bounced, 10 emails bounced, I got bad emails in there, uh, 15 people opened it, uh, 8 people clicked on an action, uh, so you can kind of then like, is this effective? Like, is this communication effective? Are people reading it? Do they find value? Are they interacting with it? So that's kind of the, you know, eventually we'd like to get there, but we're not like an email marketing program. So I think the concept is to maybe interface, have like a direct integration with a company like that. Um, but so sorry, I don't have a great answer for you there, but I, I I do understand the question. We do hear that to where I just want to pull something up, hit email, hit this letter, hit send, and have it go out to these people. So. And, okay. Well, in the meantime, can you walk through just a quick, um, and maybe if, if another student, uh, how you would set up a group um, to be able to then export that? Yeah. So it just depends upon what you want, what, like, how you want to pull the data, right? So uh, for this example, I don't know if you use tags. We, we always recommend using tags for certain things. So um, you know, club members, VIPs, my seasonal guests can have a tag. So those are easy, right? Just say, hey, find everybody that has a tag of this. Um, sure. Or if I want to search on reservation data, like let's find everybody with arrival um, between, let's go back and hit, I probably don't have very many here. This is my demo database, but let's, let's just find anybody that came last year um, and then hit search. So now I've created a list uh, that I can export. Um, so it really just depends upon um, your criteria. So you could say, well, show me everybody that arrived last year and uh, came from email promotions. 
I don't probably don't have any. So you can kind of add criteria to the list to kind of filter out those. Okay. Some some other people are like, well, show me everybody from the state of Minnesota uh, and that are uh, club members. I pr again, I probably know. Oh, I got a couple people. Um, so you know, those, these people are club members from the state of Minnesota. So you can kind of just use those filters and, and export those lists. And I have had some people just export that list. And in, in Excel, you can copy that column of their emails and just BC, like go into your Outlook and put it in the BCC and paste those emails in there and kind of just use your Outlook. That's good. Like if it's only like to, 15 or maybe even up to 50 people that would be a good way to do that again you're kind of just using this to get your filter you're getting into excel you're copying that column pasting it into the bcc and sending it um because what is the the max for an email out of like um, outlook uh, it really depends upon who your outlook provide or who your kind of your email provider is i know i've sent them um, i've sent bccs to probably a hundred plus people before without any issues. I mean, people responded to it and, and stuff, but I mean, it's not like a bet. I'm not saying that's a best practice or anything, but it's sort of a, a temporary workaround if you, if you kind of want to do a few of those, but again, I, I, you know, it's not a true email marketing platform and, and how you should do it, but. Thank you. Oh, you bet. All right. One more. Um, one comment here, a feature to block guests that you don't want back would be nice. Uh, yep, yeah. so one one thing I do recommend is I get this question a ton. Uh, well, we'll see here, it's Starbuck, remember he trashed the room? Create a tag for not welcome or bad guest. So now when I actually go on here, let's say he calls or, you know, hey, I'm looking for availability. Yeah, I wanna take it, we click and drag. And we say, all right, you know, what's your name? And he says, Buck Star. Um, so when I click on that, I can see right even right instantly right now, uh, he's not welcome. Oh, you know what, Star? Uh, you can click on it. And then again, we can go back and, oh, you know what? You remember the last time you stayed here in uh, December, you trashed the room. Uh, you owe me a hundred bucks, by the way, or, you know, Oh, dang, uh, that room, that last room was booked. We don't have anything available. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, so that was a touch on that. Um, emails you send end up in customers, spam, junk folder, uh, inherent system, have the wrong setting. Paul, um, I'd encourage you to reach out to our support team on that. Just ask them, it's, it's, possible you know make sure that correct email is set up if you have a business a domain related email so that i would recommend following up with our support team on that so uh next question can we eliminate canceled reservations to be included in the email if i had a reservation cancel The week before I was sent out an email for all guests arriving on a certain day. If I had a reservation canceled, they show up on the list. Um, Lori, I want you to follow up on that specific example. I am going to show you in your in your feedback. It's an example. The week before guests arrive, I send out an email um, to all those guests. I'm hoping that you uh, are aware or have used the scheduled emails. So for that example, um, if they have an arrival here, so like a pre-arrival confirmation, I can build a letter that I always want to go out a week before they come and stay. So I can build a letter saying, um, you know, hey, looking forward to your stay next week. Here's some details of your reservation. Uh, if you need anything else, give us a call. And I want, I always want to send that out usually a week before they come. So you can set it up, set up the letter this many days before their arrival and everybody reads their email first thing in the morning. So I can save that schedule. Um, 
So just in case you don't use that already, I'm just bringing that up because that was kind of your example there. Um, but yeah, why don't you ping me or ping the support department because canceled reservations no longer have an arrival date. So um, I'm just curious to know about that more. So um, where on the reservation can you put returning, the next question, where on the reservation can you put returning guests without looking in your private notes? Reservation put returning guests. Beverly, I'm gonna unmute you quick, maybe to get a recap of that. Beverly, I've allowed you to talk. If you unmute yourself, I just want to get a handle. I'm not sure what the question is. Hello. Yep, I can hear you. Um, me being new, I don't know a lot of the snowbirds that come here repeatedly for ten years to where the owner does, how could you open up the reservation and it will pop up saying returning guest because a lot of stuff that him and I do, we put in our private notes, but how could I get into a reservation and open it up or and see that they're a returning guest? Is there somewhere to put it that's gonna stay the minute I open up that reservation? So first of all, we, we haven't, we have an auto tag that can get applied to every individual that has stayed here more than once. So okay. once a guest has stayed here twice or more, they it can trigger an auto. Yep. So a repeat guest. So you'll want to check your the configuration there under okay. people tags. People tag. And then you know I'll Does that go. That makes sense. What I ask. Yep. Yep. Okay. So the name is the name of the tag here and there's a trigger for a repeat guest so this tag is going to be triggered for when people are a repeat guest yes that's what i okay yep perfect that helps all right thanks for thank you for the, yep and that is it that's all the questions i know there's some follow-up items um it is 1247 here. So I appreciate everyone's time. I love the interaction. Hope to, to, uh, to have just as many, if not more. Uh, in the future, ping me if, you, if there's certain topics you guys want to talk about or go through or get different areas of the program training. Um, let me know. Uh, give us some feedback and, and we'll plan these sessions around what our users want to hear about. And I do plan on having these Q&A sessions. Hopefully they're valuable. Uh, so if you want to give me feedback of whether you thought that was valuable, hearing from other people, hearing other questions, asking questions, let me know that as well. If nobody's finding it valuable, then um, we don't need to do it. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and let me, I'm going to type in my email address here, jeff.hebrink at resstream.com and my phone number direct dial is 303-872-6121 so if you guys want to jot that down quick if you don't already have that if you want to ping reach out to me directly feel free to do so um, and then again for those few people make sure you follow up with support or if you want to go to me first i can bring it to the support so thank you very much and um, we'll talk to you next time Thanks, everyone.